Okay, let's look at how we can organize our information. First of all, we can use something called an outline, right? So an outline, I think you've used before, has different levels. So here we can see we have an outline example, and we have level number one, and level number two, and level number three. And of course, level number one is our top main point. And then these are supporting points. And then each one of these can have supporting sub points. And you can have sub sub points, right? So we have here three levels. Outlining is a way to organize your presentation. Outlining divides big parts, like your main topics, into smaller parts, like subtopics. Each smaller part can then be divided into even smaller parts. By using an outline, you do not have to make your presentation from the start to the end, but you can add the information as you find it. Now, here what do I mean? What I'm trying to say is that when you're planning your presentation, you need to have your main point, that is key. Then you need to kind of think of a system. But now you need to put the information inside. But by using an outline, you do not have to make your presentation from the beginning to the end. You can make a little bit here, make a little bit here, make a little bit here. Because you use an outline that gives you all of the pieces and the parts. And you can add more to the outline, add more to level one, add more to level two, add more to level three. And then you can mix them up in different ways, move them around, and add to them, change them. So you don't need to make your presentation from the beginning to the end. Key point. What's a way we can do this? Well, a very cool way we can do this is index cards. Like here we can see these index cards are very helpful. I love to use index cards. You see you have these cards here. You can buy them at, the, at a bookstore or a supply shop or the school supply shop. Index cards are small pieces of paper that can be used to create an outline for your presentation because each one of them you can add a point or a supporting point. It could be level one, level two, level three. You can add levels and points as you think of them, as you come up with new ideas, as you find new information. You can then lay the cards out to create a system. Because once you have the cards, then you can put them on a table and say, well, these ideas go together, these ideas go together, maybe this idea can go first and this idea can go last, right? So this is what the cards are very helpful for, because you move them around. You can fill in the details as you complete your research. So these cards are kind of points, but then you can add more details with more cards. You can add more information. Of course, you can use your phone or you can use a, a computer or a notebook, but you know, that's not really convenient because it's just a small little screen and it's a list. You don't want a list. What you want to do is you want to have your ideas and your supporting points. Then you can organize them. Then you begin to figure out which comes first, which comes second, which comes third. Then you may add something to the second. You may add something to the fourth. But when you make something on your phone or on your computer, it tends to be very vertical and it's not easy to change around. Using this approach is really flexible and rewarding and I think Give it a try and you, you'll find it's very good. Now, of course, Microsoft Word does also do outlining. And we're going to look at this more. I'm going to make a special video just on using Word's outline functions, which are pretty good. You can also use other software like Microsoft OneNote can also help you do this. So let's take a quick look here at the basics of using Word. Of course, you can go into Outline View inside of Word and then it has different levels for your outline levels. So you push these buttons here and you can change the text to be more deeper level or more higher level like this. And inside of Word this is called the outline view.
Microsoft Word includes an outline view that you can use. Each level can be moved up or down and the levels can be changed at any time. And this is what an outline looks like. Now, I just mentioned Microsoft Word has a good function, but so does LibreOffice, the open source office that also does outlining very well. So choose which one you like. Now here's an example of an outline, and this looks very complicated. This is pretty typical of a thesis presentation or research paper. So you can see that it looks just like a research paper of an introduction and then a literature review, methodology, results, and discussion, conclusion, and implications. So you can see that we have our main topics, then our subtopics, and sometimes we even have our sub subtopics, right? So we have our top level, and then we have our sub level, and we have our sub sub level. Creating an outline may seem like a lot of work but it is vital to creating a smooth presentation. So very helpful to make an outline. This outline here is a, a research on e-commerce, I think. So this is one of our research students. Okay, that looks a little bit long for a presentation. I don't think I would like a presentation that long, but if you're making a, a thesis defense, for example, or a research presentation, that may be required. But again, look at the top. What do we have at the beginning? Introduction. What do you do in your research introduction when you're writing a research paper or your thesis? You tell what's the main point, what's the main reason you're doing this research, what's the main research issue you're addressing. Then you go into all of the detail, then at the very end you repeat what your finding is. So I think this really makes my point well, which is you really need to begin at the beginning with your main point and then you're supporting it all the way through. Okay, so that's planning. It's easy to say, hey, just go make a presentation. Or what I think people often do is they make slides. First, let's make slides. Here's 20 slides, 30 slides, 40 slides. And then let's spend time to make the slides jump and move and colorful and make sounds so pretty. Yes, that looks great, but that is not the way to make a good presentation. Spend your time first planning. What do we do in planning? We think about the main point. That's what we really need, the main point. We need to think of what is it that's gonna grab the audience's attention. Do we need slides that are fancy and colorful? No, not if it's gonna make people feel bored and wasting their time. We need to have that main point. Then we need to think about what's the system. What kind of system are we going to use for this presentation? What are we going to do for making this presentation stay interesting and helping our audience follow us to the end? And at the end, we're going to be doing what? Probably making our main point all over again, again and again, so that they don't forget it before they leave. Okay, so I think that's the planning, getting ready stage for your presentation. Don't skip this part. You really need to spend time on this part. You need to brainstorm with your group members, with the people you're gonna be presenting with, or if you're presenting alone, you need to really spend time on this. This is often where I spend most of my time, is how am I going to make a main point? What is my main point? What's the system I'm gonna use? Then I spend days filling out the detail and making my slides, but first comes the planning. Good luck.